Welcome back to the week five edition of the Balls Deep Podcast. I'm your host, Finky Town, the cool, calm, and collected. And now we've got my co-host, Mr. Dave Eddie. Dave, new uh, new leading song here. We're going to stick with it. How are you, how you yeah, feeling about that? Yeah, a little, hey man, little bugle gets me going, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. A little bugle gets everyone going here. Yeah. I uh, think it's a it's a nice choice. We've got your marine background. Uh, we've got my uh, no marine background, and I think it's a <laughs> it's a good little uh, it's a good little combo there. So how you doing? How'd you do last week? Uh, last week was interesting. I had I had like literally a hundred and eight different lineups in um, with just a variety of things, um, mostly revolving around uh, Seattle and Kansas City stacks, which didn't really do like super awesome. But I literally broke even so i mean i guess i can't complain yeah you just started with an optimizer tell me a little bit more about that oh um well i don't know do i give a free plug or what <laughs> uh, just you, you can if you'd like if it's something um, that you if it's a product that you believe in if not just tell me uh just tell me so, the process about using one of these yeah so i oh, mean the optimizer i could sit there and talk forever about that um basically um yeah optimizer is 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 awesome um uh, the process really is you go in there and you can put in your projections for what you think that, you know, all players are going to score. And then the rest of it's already in there. So the salary and all that fun stuff's in there. Um, you can then set up all sorts of, all sorts of rules and, you know, and, and kind of get the optimizer to build lineups exactly the way that you want to. And then it'll go through and, you know, you just determine how many lineups you want it to generate. It'll not randomly, but it'll generate it based on, you know, all of the information that you're feeding to this computer. And then it'll give you, you know, however many lineups you want to enter. So um, I was doing a whole bunch of 20 max entry tournaments and it was, yeah, it was really cool. It's kind of like, you know, the optimizer is only as good as the information that you give it. So, you know, if you tell it, you know, if you were to put in there, you know, hey, Drew Brees is going to score 50 points for me this week. Even though Drew Brees is out and injured, it's going to give you a ton of Drew Brees shares, you know. So um, you just you just got to put good information in. And if you can get good information in there, um, that optimizer is fantastic. Very nice. So we had, we had two head-to-head showdowns this week. The first one was Thursday night. You uh, you went with Jordan Howard as one of your running backs there as a salary saver, and safe to say he single handedly won that one for you. So congrats on that. That was a uh, that was a whooping. And I came back on the Monday night football and inched out a victory there, uh, thanks to James Connor in, in the captain slot. So we kind of split that week. We got to start doing a, a Sunday night one, so someone can always have an advantage. Yeah, for it. I don't know what happened with that. I don't. We we just kind of fucked the pooch on that one because I don't know how we missed that. That's the second one, uh, second Sunday in a row we've missed. And uh, huh. un- unlike you, I, I'm not a dog fucker. So. Oh, interesting. Oh, well, all right. Well, le- that changes our friendship a little bit. You learn something new. You learn something new every day. I'm sure there's a strong community of uh, fantasy dog fuckers out there, which uh, <laughs> I, I can introduce you to some to some people if you need. But uh, yeah, no, that was good. And these captain ones have been really fun. It's been fun to keep track. Uh, you lead allegedly six to three. Uh, allegedly okay <laughs> i don't know i don't know where you got that six from but uh you know we'll have to get back to our our fantasy six pack uh researchers there to uh see if you really had six but if not you know it's uh i like a challenge i like to be able to I come agree. back from I, I think it's time we put keith to work let him actually do something for a change i <laughs> i, I hope agree he doesn't hear this i hope he, i might get fired for that one i think he uh <laughs> who, you know who knows get definitely get him get him involved there uh the podcast but, statistician but I think you might be right. I think it actually might be 5-3 because I'm pretty sure I counted that we did a Sunday full slate. And I'm pretty sure I added that one in. So here, 5-3. Okay. There you go. We'll, we'll roll We'll roll with that. And we did do a Sunday one. Uh, I just got my ass kicked there. You had a nice little head-to-head week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was pretty bad. But that's right. It, it's a lot different. The head-to-heads, you know, the showdowns usually are a lot tighter. You only got so many guys to choose from. I mean our lineups tend to be at least somewhat similar. 
Um, but on Sunday, I don't. We probably didn't share a single person, you know. Yep. And uh, on my end, I had my first week where I just got kind of rocked. I was right there too. I had a lot of chub. I had about forty percent chub. I had about sixty percent four net. But the the ones where I played them together. I just kind of missed on the wide receivers, so it was really unfortunate there. Uh, we took a fat, we took a fat loss, but that's going to happen when when you know you're like me and uh, you're a tournament player. So uh, hopefully we can come back and bounce back this coming week, starting with our Thursday night game. So uh, we've got the Rams and Seahawks. Uh, so much better than these garbage games with these garbage teams. Uh, a lot of great players to choose from, uh, unlike the other games where there might have been one or two captain possibilities. Uh, shit, you could go through the, you know, maybe six, seven people where you can put in as your captain that can yeah, be, sure. a, be a winner here. Who are you running out there as your, uh, as your big dog there? Yeah, so this one was interesting. Um, you know, usually what I, well, I mean, what I've been doing is, and I've been doing good on these showdowns, for my captain, I've really just been deciding that I'm going to take the highest ceiling guy and, and just pay for him. So usually it's been one of the top, you know, top one, two, three salary guys, and it's no different this week. Um, I got uh, Russell Big Dick Wilson as my captain. All right, and do you have proof? Um. Uh, only from his mother. Uh, well, the only the only big thick I recognize is uh, Nick Foles, Super Bowl champion. But carry on here. Why are you run, <laughs> Why are you rolling with Russ? Um, I mean, I, I, I think that Goff has too many weapons, which is great, you know, for real life. But for fantasy purposes, it's you know kind of difficult to decide who to stack him with. So, um. I went with Russ because I think it's an easy stack with Lockett, which I'll kind of contradict myself when we get through the rest of my lineup a little bit. But um, I just I'm just more confident in Russ putting up bigger numbers this week um, against that Rams defense than I am vice versa. Got it. Got it. Very nice. Uh, tell me, go ahead and just. Tell me the rest of your lineup there. So you got yeah, Wilson, so, who's the most expensive yeah. guy on the slate. So it means you're going to have to try and find salary somewhere here. Uh, well, yeah, and that's where it got interesting. So I tried something. I'm trying something a little bit different this week, but I actually think this is my absolute favorite lineup so far. Um, so I, I paid up for Russell, and I've actually got the top four guys in salary um, on the showdown slate. So it'll be interesting. So like I said, I paired him with Lockett because that just seems dead obvious. Then I went ahead and I paid for golf as well because, um, I mean, I don't necessarily think he's going to have a bad day. I just think Russ has a higher ceiling this week. And then I had to decide who, which wide receiver I wanted to, to pair him with. And I guess you really could argue for, you know, either Cooks, Woods, or Cup. But I think Cup is – I think Cup not only has a higher ceiling, but I also think he's the safest bet. So – um, I've got the, the two quarterbacks and who I think are their two top targets, which means I had like no money left to go and spend. But um, I was able to get um, Greg Zerline. So I think, you know, he was the superior of the two kickers um, in the game and kickers where I've been saving money. But because I paid up so much, I, I literally had like fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 left. So I really had to scrape the barrel. And I'm going with Jaron Brown. Um, so Jaron Brown... Um, Kind of like I said, I had to go a little cheap on him, but you know he's Seattle's fourth receiver, kind of battling around for the third. Uh, last two weeks, he's had six catches for 80 yards. So for fourteen hundred dollars, I I think I could do a hell of a lot worse. And either way, I'm I'm still happy to throw him in the lineup when I can get, you know, the two quarterbacks and who I think are going to be their top targets for the week. Very nice. Yeah, Jaron Brown is someone who I, I strongly consider as well. And I'll probably yeah. end up playing him in my tournament lineup, in my, sure. my, ten, my the $10 tournament entry. Uh, these showdowns have been working great for me too, you know. Uh, it's been really nice. Keep cashing, keep doubling up uh, in these. And it's, uh, you know, it makes the games interesting for these awful football games. And it's fun. It takes them from start to finish if you got it. I've got Russ as my captain as well. Jameis Winston just blew apart this Rams defense. And Russell Wilson is a lot better than Jameis. I expect him to be the highest scoring player in this game. Probably a 30 spot, which translates, which translates to a 45. And uh, kind of let him go out there and do his thing. I've got uh, the guys that we've got in common. Tyler Lockett. 
So those are going to cancel out with each other. Cooper Cup, right. Cooper Cup, they're going to cancel out with each other. And obviously we've got the same captain. So it comes down to three versus three. So mm -hmm. to go up against your, your murder leg, Jaron Brown and Jared Goff, I'm going with another Rams receiver in Robert Woods. He's my next big ticket guy. Uh, I just think he's got a strong floor. He's starting to turn up a little bit. And, you know, he's one of these, one of his favorite receivers there. So getting two out of the three Rams receivers there. Uh, hopefully if Goff throws a touchdown, it goes to Robert Woods. Uh, I've got Tyler Higby as well. Go a little tight end route. Again, another one of Goff's receivers. And then I've got Rashad Penny. I've been a big fan of his. He appears to be healthy. He's off the injury report. And I think he can siphon, you know, 8 to 10 carries here. I feel like the Seahawks and Pete Carroll want to get him more involved. They want him to win that job from Chris Carson. Uh, so I think he's going to get his first shot there to really uh, really get a chance to get a hot hand and see what he could do against this Rams defense. He's a favorite tournament play of mine. And I could see myself doing a tournament lineup with Penny and uh, Chris Carson. Uh, it, worked, mm -hmm. it worked with uh, Jalen Samuel and James Conner last week. Uh, so I think that this team can, uh, you know, as much as they run the ball, get two of those guys in there. So uh, should be a good showdown, should be a, a good game, which these Thursday games have just not been. So hopefully everything equates to a nice little Thursday there. So looking forward to getting a notch back here. Oh, um, man, I got to tell you, uh, of all of them so far, this is the one I'm the most confident in. Huh, I, 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 love, I love my lineup this week. Um, like I said, this is my favorite one, uh -huh. and, and I, I think I'm going to destroy yours. I'm, I'm sorry. All right, well, we will see. We will see. Usually that type of confidence and fantasy goes the other way. So Yeah, I know. Damn it, right? <laughs> it's, it's the game we play. It's the life we live. So let's go ahead and look on to the Sunday slate. Uh, you want to see who's the main guy you've got out of all the people who you're building around, and it's a familiar name, one that I've been uh, I've been loving and had in my lineup every single week. Looks like you're full on board for this one, and that's uh, that's Dalvin Cook. Yeah, so um, I mean I I mean I think we both have been um, big on Dalvin Cook so far, right right from week one. Um, I I was fading him last week uh, just because I didn't like the matchup that he had, but he's been one of the I mean, at least top five, you know, guys this year so far, especially for DFS. Um, this is a week I think he gets right back to it. Um, you know, he's $8,400, so he's not cheap, but, you know, he shouldn't be. And I think that, you know, I could see him having a good matchup. Um, they're facing the Giants. I can see this being a fairly low-scoring game where they're just going to absolutely, you know, pound the rock. Um, and that's going to Dalvin Cook, so... You know, 20, 25 carry game. Uh, you know, I, I could see 100 yards and a touchdown without too much trouble. Uh, you know, he tends to catch the ball as well. So, you know, I don't know. Any, you know, three to five catches is, is very reasonable. Um, you know, 50 yards there too. So um, I, I think he's just a pretty safe play, but still with a very high ceiling. Are you concerned about that uh, the little Adam Thielen call out? Maybe they kind of try and get the passing game going there? I mean, I mean, even if they do, that's fine. Um, like I said, I think game flow is going to dictate a lot of cook. So, I mean, there's room in that game for Thielen to get, you know, eight catches for 120 yards and cook to still just go, go crazy. So doesn't concern me. If anything, it might help them because if they can kind of, you know, open up that passing game a little bit, that just makes more holes for cook. So, I mean, that's cool with me. I like it. I like it. And Dalvin Sowen, you know, I could definitely see myself run again. He's just, he's one of my guys. And I, I think he's someone who's safe to have in your lineup every weekend. He's finally getting the pricing that he deserves. Uh, my lock is actually going to be a running back who, uh, for the first time, is priced less than Dalvin. That's going to be Zeke. Um, they've got the Packers this week. The blueprint for beating the Packers is right in front of us. It's run the shit out of the ball. Uh, Zeke has an extremely high floor. Uh, the Cowboys, you know, their their MO is to run the ball and control the clock. And if they're going to beat the Packers, that's exactly what they have to do. Zeke hasn't really had a blow-up yet. So um, not too concerned about, about uh, ownership there. I just think he's just the safest play. I think he's good for 20, 22 points. 
at least 22, 24 points. I think he's good to hit value there with the potential to go crazy. Uh, Zeke has not gone crazy yet, and hopefully that happens for me here. So yeah, no, Zeke is a good call. There's there's a lot of good running backs this week. A lot, you know, the they're all highly they're all high price, but there's a lot of good running backs to choose from this week. Yeah, so when it comes to the lineup the construction here, uh, I really, really like spending up on running backs. Uh, sp- and speaking of that, I uh, want to go ahead and lead into some, some, you know, some more tournament guys who you think you're going to have a lot of, uh, a lot of access to this week, and guys who are going to pad that wallet for you. Yeah, so this is either going to be really brilliant. Well, I wouldn't even say brilliant. I, I, I think it's a little too obvious, but. This is either going to, it's risky, and it's either going to pay off really well, or I'm going to get absolutely destroyed. Um, I am probably going to be rolling with the majority of my shares um, with the Bengals. And, and that's even hard to say out loud. Um, and I'm sure when I listen to this, I'm probably going to think I'm crazy, but um, I'm going to have more Andy Dalton shares at quarterback than anyone else. Uh, $5,700 is a good price. Um, he's had a couple good statistical games, um, obviously not his last one, but going up against Arizona, I, I, I just see a perfect stack, um, you know, set up for him. Um, and I'm not even going to go Tyler Boyd, honestly, um, with, with Ross being out, I'm going with Auden Tate. It's only $3,500, um, to get him. And I could just, you know, I could see him having a, a decent day. I mean, I could easily see him getting eight catches 120 yards and a touchdown um and so i can stack him with dalton and then again i mean i know that's risky and then to continue the trend tyler eifert at tight end for 3300 bucks very very cheap um i will probably start almost every single tight end that plays arizona until they stop somebody so it's a really cheap stack um which is going to allow me in pretty much all my line on well, all my lineups but the majority of my lineups i'm going to have that stack I'm going to have uh, Dalvin, and I'm going to put McCaffrey in there as well. I think McCaffrey is matchup proof. Um, you're going to pay for him. He's $8,700, but I can easily afford him with that stack. So I'm going to have a lot of him. And then um, normally I don't get too into you know the defenses, um, but this particular week, the only defense that I'm going to own, bar none, is the Patriots. Mm-hmm. I think they are going to absolutely destroy Washington. I don't care if it's Colt McCoy. I don't care if it's Case Keenum. I don't care if it's Dwayne Haskins. I don't care if they put them all three on the field at the same fucking time. The Patriots are going to destroy the Redskins this week. Uh, and I can see them getting interceptions and maybe maybe a pick six or two. I mean, I think it's going to be rough. Um, I, I will not own a defense other than the Patriots this week. I think they're ranked like eight overall in overall fantasy scoring this year. Including that's all position, crazy. including all position players. That I did not know that, and that's the craziest thing you've ever said. That's that's nuts. I can't even imagine facts. That, that, and no, I it's, believe you. That's just crazy. It was either seven or nine, but I know it's definitely the back end of the top ten there, based on uh, Yahoo seasonal. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they seem like you know Washington stinks. I think that's going to be a nice play oh, yeah. there. Um, all right, well, you know, don't get me wrong. You know, we've we've been pushing Arizona. Going against Arizona all year, based on the tempo and the way they play and their defense stinks. Uh, they get Peterson back, but that offensive line is just atrocious. So uh, I hope Dalton plays out for you, uh, based on what you told me you would do if Cincinnati doesn't come through. Uh, something about a, a city? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'll tell you, well... I had a lot of shares of them um, in, the, in the Steelers game. I, I thought, I mean... Slot receivers typically destroy the Steelers. And so I went heavy. I had 20 lineups in, and my captain was Tyler Boyd and all but a couple of them, and the other ones were Andy Dalton. And I really thought that I was going to mop up, um, and they didn't do anything. So uh, Speaking of that, I just want to add a quick anecdote about my Scott Fishbowl team. Uh, Shout out to, to that league for a great cause. I was I was up twenty points going against Dalton, Mixon, and Boyd, and we held out. Uh, uh-huh. I lost Andrew Luck and Nick Foles. Andrew Luck in the third round before the season even started. Foles went down. I have been no QB. I have about two hundred and fifty points less than first place, but I'm sitting at three one. 
it's disgusting. And it's <laughs> uh it's just it's the way it goes there. So that that Cincinnati uh stinker as uh, I'll call it there helped me out in that one. So quick quick plug there. A lot of fancy six pack uh writers have, are in that league there. So uh on my end we're going with we're going with my birds. We're going with Carson Wentz here. Eagles are thirteen and a half point favorites at home. Uh, I think they're going to blow out the Jets, and I think they're going to do that through the air. The Jets have a pretty solid defensive line, pretty good against the run. Uh, and while the Eagles showed a lot of success there, I could see people thinking they're going to run a lot. I think Carson Wentz is a beautiful, beautiful tournament play with a high floor and a breakout ceiling um, at the running back position. Tell me if this sounds familiar to you. <laughs> Derrick Henry. Love me some Derrick Henry. Uh, I've got the same feeling about Henry this week as I had with Chubb last week. Uh, it's not a great matchup. They're in London. Uh, no, they're, they're not in London. Pardon me. Um, but I think that he is going to go ahead and just run the floor. I think he's going to run the floor there. I've been riding him all year, waiting for that one breakout game that we all know he's capable of having. And... Uh, you know, it's against Buffalo. I think they're going to win this game, especially with the banged-up Josh Allen, and we're not sure it's going to start. So in Tennessee, I'm riding Derrick Henry there, hoping he just has a just a monster game, gets a big run, and uh, give me 20 touches, which he's been almost averaging. Uh, then I'm going to pair him up with Zeke, you know, another high-floor, high-ceiling guy. Those two guys could put you in the money right away. Uh, to pair with Carson Wentz, I'm not going to go with a full stack. You know, I'll probably have an Alshon here, there. But, uh, you know, we're going to go with Zach Ertz as my tight end. He's my first time not playing Evan Ingram. Uh, I could see myself maybe even throwing Ingram in a flex in one. And if I'm not going to run with Wentz, then Ingram will be my tight end again because he's still not priced like the best fantasy tight end in football, which... I believe he's entering that echelon. So we're going to go with a Wentz-Ertz stack. Ertz has not been in the end zone yet. Uh, Carson's his boy in a blowout game where I think Wentz turns up. I think this is getting that, that two-touchdown game from Zach Ertz here. Um, at receivers, so uh, you know I got the most expensive tight end on the slate. I've got the, one of the most expensive running backs. Henry is not cheap. So I've kind of had to go and find some value at wide receiver. All to take, you know, uh, I think he's going to be a pretty chalk play, but he's a chalk that I'm going to have to Bart Simpson, you know. I'm going to have to yep. to ride that chalk to the ground. He's just too cheap. Uh, he's averaged seven targets a game the last two weeks uh, with John Ross gone. And, again, going against an Arizona defense, even though they get Patrick Peterson back, he should probably focus more on Tyler Boyd. And uh, I just think that he's easily going to hit value. Sometimes, you know, they're – People are chalk for a reason. I think he's going to pay off his value with the possibility to, you know, maybe get in the end zone and give you a 5x of his 3,500 price. I like Cortland Sutton. Uh, Denver's going to have to toss the ball to uh, keep up with the Chargers. You know, they get Melvin Gordon back. Uh, he's still really moderately priced at 4,900. He's the best receiver on the Broncos. Sorry, Emmanuel. Ooh, I Sa- disagree with sorry, that. sorry, Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah, but he's just Emmanuel Sanders and I are going to see you in the parking lot after this, bud. Hey, I'm one of Emmanuel Sanders' biggest fans, but I think that <laughs> Sutton, Sutton on the outside there, he's always going to have a chance to win those one-on-one matchups. And uh, at 4,900, it's just a really tasty price. And then uh, another wide receiver is my my big dog, who again I need to go value for some reason. And I see that he's someone that you are fading this week, and he's someone, and he's someone who I'm all in on. He was, uh, he's going to be a core of my lineup build, along with Zeke, and that's Julio Jones. Uh, before I get into why uh, I'm feeling Julio, why are you, uh, why are you anti Julio this week? I, t- I mean, I can, I can never blame anyone for playing Julio Jones. Um, I mean, I would consider him pretty much matchup proof, um, so I don't blame you there. I, however, am completely fading him this week um, for, for two reasons. Number one, he is the second highest salaried wide receiver, which I, I, I don't disagree with. Um, but Atlanta has been weird this year, man. Like, like they've got, you know, a, a pretty good offense. I mean, Matt Ryan is Matt Ryan, but, you know, Jones and Ridley are, are two great receivers. And the last two weeks they haven't done 
much of anything. So I don't know if that's a thing or if that's just, you know, a blip on the radar, but I'm going to not pay up big time for Jones um, because I'm paying up big time for Cook and McCaffrey. So um, because I'm paying up for those two running backs, I, I couldn't afford Jones even if I wanted to. So um, so it's, it's not necessarily so much a knock on him um, as it is I won't have the salary, but um, – He's just had a couple weird weeks, and I don't like it. Gotcha. And uh, in my flex to round out this this kind of lineup here that I'm rolling with is going to be someone on the other end of that. I'm expecting a shootout in Houston there with Ryan and Deshaun Watson, uh, and I'm going to slide it to Will Fuller at 4,500. Just missed the bomb last week from Watson. Uh, he's been pretty disappointing if you're just going to look at the game logs, uh, but he's been getting some opportunities deep. And I think that they're going to be able to connect on one of these this week in uh, what could be a shootout. So if I get Julio and Fuller as the two main guys in that game, along with my, you know, Zeke and uh, Zeke and Derrick Henry combo, I think I could be looking at a juicy little, uh, juicy little cash there. And my defense, I don't disagree at all on the Patriots. I think they're definitely the best player on the board, and they're priced like a, a wide receiver too. You know, based on the unreal season that they've been having. But going with Derrick Henry as my running back, I like to tear him up with the Titans defense. They're solid D, and uh, they could be going against Matt Barkley, who is, I say this, <laughs> I do not say this lightly, might be the worst professional quarterback I, I've ever seen with my own two eyes. So, I don't know how, I mean, he's got to be a smart guy. I don't know how he's on the roster there. I was excited when the Eagles drafted him and traded up for the top pick in the fourth round on the third day of the draft, one of Chip Kelly's uh, Chip Kelly's guys. And uh, I will admit that I drank the Chip Kool-Aid. But Barkley, I mean, he's just, he's got, he can't throw the ball past 30 yards. He just can't, he can't Maybe toss it. you uh, need to look up some old footage of uh, my good friend Joey. Who? Quarterbacks ever. Uh, may, maybe, but I, I don't want to watch bad quarterbacks. I want to watch good quarterbacks. Oh, amen. And, uh, you know, Matt Barkley is not one of them. So if he gets to start with Buffalo, I am saving the salary, pivoting from the Patriots and going to the Titans just because he is the worst. So uh, let's go ahead. Tell me a couple guys, maybe based on ownership, lack of faith. Uh, give, me, give me one in each position that you're going to be – just having no piece of this week. Yeah, so for me, a lot of times it really just comes down to salary more than anything where I think that there is a better value somewhere else. Um, so in this case, Tom Brady is a fade for me at quarterback, <laughs> not because he's got a bad matchup or anything like that. Um, he's a third highest um, salary quarterback, and I won't roster him because I think he has too easy of a matchup. So... Uh, I could see them just obliterating the Redskins. And that to me means that he might play three quarters of football. And I, I just, I could just see them running the shit out of the ball. Uh, 50 carry kind of game for, for that team. So I'm not going to touch Brady. Um, running back wise, this is. Kinda... Well, well, I got you there. Well, I got you mm-hmm. there, Dave. You know, you think they're going to yeah. run the ball. Uh, how yeah. come, are you going to touch any of the Patriots running backs? I. Uh, DFS wise, the only person that I would touch on the Patriots is is Tom Brady because I have n- no idea. Even if it was a, even if they were playing the Rams, and I thought it was going to be a shootout, I don't know if I need to get Edelman. I don't know if I need to get Gordon. I don't know if I need James White. I don't know if they're going to pick up some kid who bagged Belichick's groceries and he's going to have a five touchdown game. I, I just they're they're in real life they're just too good and they can do whatever they want to whenever they want to so it's hard for me to really trust anyone other than Brady because nobody else is going to throw the ball gotcha gotcha very nice Um, my couple tournament guys uh, Jameis has a juicy matchup he's been killing it lately Uh, could be a rude awakening with the Saints defense there Uh, Marshall Lattimore is playing nice on the outside the defensive line is getting pressure I think he'll be Relatively high owned for the for the game log chasers and uh, that little green thing uh, next to the matchup that usually uh, is an indicator of ownership percentage. 
So uh, I'll take my chances going against Jameis there. Um, we're going to, you know, Aaron Jones might be in, in line for a workload. I just not interested in him versus Dallas. Uh, and then someone who a lot of the industry guys have been talking about as a lock in your lineup, DraftKings is fucked up, uh, is Golden Tate at 4,500. I call, you know, I don't know if, this is a hot take, but I want nothing to do with him there. I think he's still going to be the third option at best in the passing game behind Evan Ingram and Sterling Shepard. He's playing in his first game on a new team in a new system with a rookie quarterback. So, uh, yeah, the price is nice. He's obviously a very talented player. We have. I need to see it first. I need to see it first on how he's going to integrate into this offense. Sterling Shepard runs the majority of his routes out of the slot. That's where Golden Tate is best. Uh, who knows who they're going to push to the outside. It's just uh, based on the extremely high ownership and the uh, the uncertainty. He's just someone I won't even consider this week. Uh, I'd rather go with Alden. The other, I'd rather go with the uh, the other Tate. I'd rather go Alden as opposed to Golden there. So he's someone who I am avoiding like the plague. Uh, people are focused on the wrong Tate. How about that? Uh, and then I know you love you like yourself some Keenan Allen. I do, I do. I think he's going to be again. This is basically just a, an ownership fade, but I think he's going to get the the Chris Harris treatment out there at Denver, and I think he's going to be in for his first dud of the uh, season. We don't know how they're going to integrate Melvin Gordon, Austin Eckler. I think they're going to kind of run the ball a lot. Rivers kind of gets an easy day. And I think Keenan Allen will, could let people down that week. So, any thoughts on that? Uh, I mean, Keenan Allen's another guy that I consider matchup proof, um, and I and I can say that not solely based, but largely based on the fact that I watched him beat Darius Slay um, when when you know Chargers and Lions played. You love Darius you some Slay. Slay. Yeah, Dar- yeah, big play Slay is one of the best cover corners uh, in the league and that's not even because i'm a lions fan i know i i usually know when i'm having a homer take and i i don't think that's a homer take at all i don't disagree keaton allen was too much for slay so i mean patrick ramsey might be the only guy that i would say maybe i would consider you know something with allen but anybody else i'm playing him and i completely agree with you on the whole gordon and eckler thing um i i could see that becoming a game where they run the ball a lot, but um, I've got both Gordon and Eckler as fades for me because we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, neither one of them is going to have a big day unless somebody gets hurt because um, they're going to split the carries. Uh, I mean, Eckler was an amazing fill in for Gordon. And so even if Gordon is healthy and back and they plan on giving him a, you know, full, whatever his workload is going to be, it's, it's still going to be cut in by Eckler. So I wouldn't touch Gordon or Eckler until, you know, one of them gets hurt or something because they're going to they're gonna split the, you know, the carries and they're going to split the, you know, snaps on that. Very nice. And uh, to lead into, you know, I want to get, before we build our weekly lineup, I want to see if there's any sneaky plays that people might overlook. Uh, one of the last guys who I'm going to be avoiding this week is on your list of uh, sneaky plays. That's oh, David. okay. That's David Montgomery. Uh, wow, really? Yeah, so I could okay. see him. I could Again, this would strictly be an ownership fade. He's a nice okay. price, and his carries have definitely been going up. I think he'll you know, be one of the higher, more higher-owned running backs there. But you're likely going to get Chase Daniels, your quarterback, who stinks. Um, I just think that the, the ceiling is not as high as some people could be hoping for the rookie running back. I think Tariq Cohen will still be involved. Uh, and while he's getting to work up to that workhorse role, I don't think it comes this week. Why do you think it does? Um, I think it does kind of, you know, for everything that you just said, though. Um, I, I think for sure he's going to get the carries this week. Um, Chase Daniel is going to be the quarterback, so I think they're going to pound the rock with him just relentlessly and I could definitely see a bunch of eight man boxes and you know whatnot but I don't think David Montgomery necessarily you know definitely doesn't have the reputation to where you know they're going to completely sell out on the run unless 
he were to, you know, be going off and having a huge game. And by that point, you've already got your points before they start going to shut him down. So I think it's a, I think it's a volume thing. Um, he could be someone that a lot of people are in on, but uh, at 5,200, he's not crazy cheap, but he's cheap enough that that would definitely be a spot where if I'm trying to save money, but I'm not trying to hit a lottery ticket for, you know, $3,000 or, you know, just hit a home run on somebody, that would be a spot where I could see, you know, dropping, downgrading somebody, but still maintaining a player that is going to put up points for me. You know? Very nice. I can definitely see the logic there, but it's uh, me personally, we're going to go against the percentage there. So when it comes to tournaments, sometimes you just have to eat guys who could be in a good situation and cross your fingers. So, you know, take it risk, try and get things done there. So uh, I hope I'm right and you're wrong on that one. <laughs> who are some other guys you think could be, uh, think could be sneaky here before we go ahead and build that lineup? So this is a weird week for me. Um, I, I mean, I'll just briefly m- mention them, but we, I've already talked about them. So I think that the Bengals that I talked about, Dalton, Tate, Eifert, again, I think that that's a really cheap stack. And if that hits, I think that you could win a just a ton of money. Um, the only other one, and I just got a feeling about this, and um, this is a little bit too of a shout out to um, someone that listens to the podcast. I told her that um, I would make an attempt over the next few weeks to, to focus on a cowboy, and so Wait, I'm doing that. Are you saying we have a listener? <laughs> I know, right? It's crazy. Um, so she's even, my boss, so I, I, I feel as though I'm obligated anyway. So Even though she's a Cowboys fan, thank uh, you for, thank you for listening. Against her. <laughs> even if I did, I wouldn't say it for her to hear me. Come on, Bert. <laughs> um, but Blake Jarwin... Blake Jarwin is a guy that, for $2,700, if I'm not going to spend on a tight end and I want to save some money, I could spend money on him. He, he's had, you know, he hasn't had a lot of catches, but what he does is typically a big play. So, you know, if he gets, you know, a couple of those, two of those, and one of them is a touchdown, your $2,700 is a hell of an investment. And then you can pay up for, you know, you're McCaffrey or Cook like I am, or, you know, you can pay up for other things. So I don't know exactly how many shares of him I will necessarily have, but um, if I ran into a situation where I need to save money, that would be a spot that I would look. Oh, very nice. Very nice. And on my end, there are a couple guys who I think could go under the radar. One of them is someone who I would like to... I would like to maybe get in there. We used him last week in our lineup, um, which did not cash again, and we'll get to that shortly. Um, I think, uh, where is this here? Some guys people might overlook at quarterback. I think Daniel Jones could be overlooked there. Uh, I think along with the you know the Golden Tate fade, maybe a Daniel Jones, Sterling Shepard, Evan Ingram stack could give you some uh, could give you some flexibility the rest of your of your way. You can maybe get a lot of production in that, uh, especially if they are getting beaten by a pulp and having to play behind by the Vikings, which is what we could anticipate. At running back, as I mentioned here, here's the London guy, and I'm gonna go back to the Josh Jacob train. Uh, we went with him last week in our mutual lineup. Uh, he hasn't popped off since week one. Um, I I think that I think that this could be the week again. And when he does kind of get that up, it's going to be at a low ownership, and I'm going to want to be on that board there. So I, I like me some Josh Jacobs. Uh, you know, versus Chicago, who I think they can be run on. And uh, we'll see. The Raiders' line's kind of coming back together. I think he'll be owned at less than like three percent in a in a big tournament there. But he's priced at forty five hundred. So if he, you know, he's been averaging seventy plus yards a game. Uh, if he gives you some of that and he gets into the end zone, he can easily hit value there. So I think that they're going to really start to focus their offense around him. Uh, hopefully, John Gruden realizes he's their best shot to win football games. And then. Uh, Again, this one would be only if Josh Allen plays. Would be John Brown. His floor has been surprisingly high. Uh, he could pop at any play there. If it's Matt Barkley, do not play anybody on the Bills. Uh, and at wide receiver, 
I love me some Allen Robinson. I think that he's just a damn good wide receiver who's almost quarterback proof. Uh, Chase Daniel would go his way early and often at 5600 is a, a really nice price to pay for a wide receiver one on a team there. So, uh, and then of course Will Fuller, I think he'll be low owned, and at tight end, I'm not leaning this way. But if there's ever a time for O.J. Howard to break out and pop off, it's against the Saints who do not defend the tight end well at all. Um, I almost feel bad for putting this thought out in the air. No, no, I like it. I actually like that. But I just think that everyone has given up on him, and for good reason. You know, He has not been producing, and he's not been that great. Uh, but I think that he could, you know, if, if there's – if it's not this week, it ain't going to happen. If it's not this week, yeah, it ain't no, going to happen. I, li- I like Howard. I actually had a couple of shares of Howard last week because I thought it was going to be a high-scoring game like it was. Uh huh. So I-, I actually plugged him in a couple of times just for giggles. And it did not work out last week. Well, I mean, you know, I, th- I was right that the game was high-scoring. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, I-, I got that right. Very nice. Well, let's go ahead. Uh, before we create our lineup for this week, I just want to go back and check out our our last week effort. And I just had it up right now. Was, at- that, was that a pun? Did you mean week like W-E-A-K or? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I totally did that on purpose. Um, going back, we put up a uh, a 116. Which was not which was not great, but it was not as bad as as we might have thought. So uh, well, we do go for home runs, so we are playing balls to the wall. Um, oh. You know, we're trying to get our balls deep in that tournament. So yeah, we're we not, want that deep we're not, green. Yep, we're not trying to double our money. We're we're trying to you know finish in the top hundred. You know exactly. Um, so we so. might we might have to let me pick the quarterback this week. Uh, because I was gonna already suggest that, so that was exactly who, that, I, I swear that's exactly what I was gonna say for quarterback. So you're good. So we went last week. We went with uh, a giant stack, and I had mentioned last week that I, I w- I wanted to fade him, and I begrudgingly put him in there as our lineup there, and uh, he he did not come through for us. Um, so I, I think I, I'd like to take the lead on that one. We went with an Evan Ingram and Sterling Shepard stack, which again. It could be nice to go back to that well this week, but I think there are other options. We ended up putting up a, a 126. Uh, we had Josh Jacobs with a 12.8 at 9.2%. Uh, Mark Ingram was chalk as expected. He was owned. He was owned by 28.5% in that tournament, which uh, we kind of predicted, but we thought that it'd be worth eating the chalk, and it was not. So that's going to shut you down for the three dollar tournament anyway. I also like. I like giving a good review of last week's effort and putting our thought process behind it, seeing if we were right with our ownership. Um, the Evan Ingram and Sterling Shepard, they were both owned by t- at least 20%. Uh, but let's look. And uh, Tyler Lockett, you know, we want to get a piece of that Seattle, owned by 23%, nine points. We had no shot there. But we did have some some good calls there. So Kenny Galladay at 122 Credit to you on that one. As yeah, he was, and he had a touchdown taken away. God damn it! He did. He absolutely did. A touchdown taken away. It was, that was bullshit. I was watching that, and uh, RIP to that game. There, we had a fun little Twitter interaction. Yeah, I think if you're more positive, <laughs> I think it'll will the Tigers more to a win. And then, uh, um, Tiger season's over there, bud. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Detroit Lions. <laughs> you know the, the Detroit animals. One, one your, of the your animals. Shirt, your shirt is on your mind. I am wearing a Detroit Tigers shirt. I I love the D. Pause. Yes, I, I, I go out there for a techno festival every year, as we mentioned, so I've got mad love for Detroit. Uh, but in the flex, I had to convince you to, to get into them. I, I was right about the percentage being sub 5%, coming in at 2.4% there, bringing in uh, seven catches for 108 yards and 19.8 fantasy points with Stephon Diggs. Uh, yep. that, turned out to be, that turned out to be a great call there. Um, and uh, the Chargers defense, you know, going against Miami, we paid up 11 points, but uh, that's still going to be worth it, I guess, when, when you're running a defense there. So let's go ahead and build this sucker. Dave, we're going to cash this week. Like, okay. at a minimum, um, at a minimum, we're going to cash. But I think uh, I think I could be feeling really, really nice about this one here. And, uh, shit, I mean, I'd like to run out Carson. I know, I knew you were, so 
I, I, that's what I was going to suggest anyways. Love it. Uh, I'm glad we're on the same page there. That's a good vibe. Um, do we want to just let's throw Ertzy in there? Yep, I, I was already playing on that too. Wonderful. Uh, and I think you're going to want to put Dalvin in there. Okay. Or do you want to go? Or you want to go Zeke? Um, I'm good either. I'm good either way. They're, they're basically the same price. Um, um, I think I think Zeke's you know save a hundred bucks doesn't really matter. Okay. The matchup, the possible blow up. Again, I I like Dalvin a lot. We'll see if we can get him in there as well. Uh, cause I know you're not going to want to go Julio and I'm fine pivoting from Julio there, but I think Zeke's the safest play, the safest floor. Yep. He'll be owned by a lot, but I think he's in for a monster game. I'm good with, I think he'll be owned less than Cook. I don't know about that. You know, a lot of people, they go, they go to that opposing rank, you know, uh, they see uh, 30th and it's bright green. It's really inviting for them. Uh, and that was one of the main reasons why I like Stefan Diggs because, you know, it was in that, that dark red there, uh, which which uh, Dalvin Cook is this week. So uh, and Since we talked about a cowboy, I'll just once again point out the shout-out to my boss there. Yes, absolutely. And again, Eagles fam, Zeke's my guy this week, and I think he's, yeah. uh, I think he's in for a blow-up. So, so we got an Albert lineup in there so far. So, so you far. you want to go with um, our, our Tate guy? Let's, yeah. We, we agree with him? We both like him. Um, I think he'd be a good salary saver. Again, yeah. and this $3 one, you know, Let's you know to our listeners. We want to keep in mind. There's what two hundred thousand entries in this tournament. Uh, so gosh, there, could be, there could be more. I don't know which exactly you entered in, but like the the, the three the three dollar every week we're doing the the three dollar. Uh, is it the twenty max? Yeah, no, it's the twenty. Yeah. It's the twenty max, and I think there's okay, like two hundred thousand like, entries. I think there's more than that. I think there's. I think last week there was like. Six hundred and some thousand. Oh, you, that you are right. Six hundred and thirty-four thousand one hundred sixty-five mm-hmm. positions paid. You just have to come in the top one hundred fifty thousand to uh, to get a payout there. So yeah, I, I tripled my money in that tournament with my twenty entries last week. That's that was where I did well. Very nice. That's where the optimizers can come into play. I think Tate's going to be a good one there, good value. But I think he'll probably be owned by like thirty percent in this tournament, which is a lot. That's yeah, no, it's possible for sure. Think about that. Mark Ingram was almost thirty percent, and thirty percent of six hundred thousand is one fifty, two hundred thousand. I'm no mathematician, but it's up there, uh, and that's just a lot, a lot, a lot of entries there. So, um, how about this? Let's hold off on him and see if we really need to get to a salary saver. So, who's your, you know? If you have to choose one wide receiver, I know we talked about this a little bit. Some of them are Ke- – one of them is Keenan Allen. I don't love Keenan yeah, Allen he's, this week. He's pricey. Yeah, he's pricey. I think we need to get a mid-range guy. Again, this is okay. going to be kind of Burtism, but what do you think about Will Fuller as a cheap wide receiver? Yep. yep, I like him. I think he'll be relatively contrarian. So I'm going to I'm gonna slide him in there. What, what was his cost? He's 4500 Oh, okay. So it's just a very, very comfortable price with one of the highest pay- possible payouts in there. Um, Do you want to just throw the Pats defense in there? Oh. Just be done with that? Kind of. Uh, I would, you know, they're definitely expensive. Let's throw them in there, and if we need to fit someone in who else who we really like, we can, uh, we can pivot there because, uh, again, I think they'll be highly owned. And when it comes to tournament, I really think that if Matt Barkley is playing, then the Titans are, are a no-brainer. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. So, say we have the Patriots defense in there, that gives us about 5,400 for three more slots, two wide receivers and a flex. So let's go to wide receiver here. We want to get some Dave taste in here. Oh, let's see, we got to save a little bit of cash. Um... Should we just say? I mean, should we just throw Alden Tate in there? Yeah, we can and see what that puts us at. Let's see. Let's see where that, that gives us. us yeah, that makes it two receivers, and it that uh, increases the value of our other two positions, giving us sixty four hundred for two more players there. So we can get two really really nice players with high floors and big upsides. Oh well, no, I actually um. Let me take out one other guy who I had put in without discussing, 
Uh, he's someone who I would like to run, and that's Josh Jacobs. I just think that he's he's my Stephon Diggs call of the week at forty five hundred at forty five hundred um, against Chicago. He's someone who, in this type of tournament, I think he'll be owned less than three yeah. uh, percent. Yeah, again, against the Bears, especially. Where you know we attacked the Bears last week and Diggs came through and Dalvin Cook had a solid game against the Bears last week sure. and I think that he's just in, in this type of tournament. This is strictly an ownership play with a high floor that people are just not going to be on and if he happens to go off then we are looking good. Uh, do I get your your consent there? Yeah, it's, that's good. It's I'm the good wild card, so we we put him in there with Zeke. And now we've got a wide receiver and a flex with, yep. with an average of 6,400 for those two slots. So, so let's look at wide receiver. You pick one of these and, and pay up? Okay. Um, you, can basically, tell you, what. you basically have your I'll pick of the what. litter here. Let's, let's do this. Let's, like, last week was a lot of me. Um, let's plug in Julio and see what we have for a flex. Oof. All right, let's see what it, it it plays us here. This is getting close to a lineup that I've I've already built, but we're feeling good. Oh, really? And it gives us 5,100 for a flex, and those top players are... Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I can see from your notes here already there's a guy that fits in that you talked about liking that I have no problem with. $4,900. Cortland Sutton. Yes, sir. I uh, I like it. This is a this is a very Burt lineup, but I don't have a problem with it. Uh, I'm trying to look and see. I mean, I don't I don't think I would have this exact lineup personally, but I think that's kind of what makes it good, you know? Yeah, um, and Jacobs, you always want to have some ways that are just like someone who no one's going to play, but is still a good yeah. player. You know, they still have the talent. They're a focal point of the team. Um, if the game script goes well and they're kind of controlling the clock, and Gruden talks about getting Jacobs more involved in the passing game, he caught two passes last week. Uh, I think he could be the guy that uh, lets us play Alden Tate, you know. So by balancing someone, a cheap, chalky guy, going someone to, to make it a little weirder, gets it going there. So from top mm-hmm. to bottom, it gives us $200 in salary remaining. Carson Wentz at quarterback. Ezekiel Elliott, Josh Jacobs as our running backs. Our wide receivers are Will Fuller, Alden Tate, Julio Jones, Zach Ertz at tight end, Cortland Sutton in the flex, and the Patriots defense. I like it, Dave. Mm-hmm. We're good. We're good. I like this is, it. This is a safer lineup than what we're used to as well. There's, there's really, I mean, other than Jacobs and I guess you could argue Fuller, I think everyone else is pretty good i mean tate obviously isn't a household name but injuries in the matchup just scream you know a great play so this is a much higher floor than we're used to so to you know to cash i think is is more likely than usual i don't know that this one would necessarily you know be the best out of you know six hundred and forty thousand entries but this one has potential to be to be, you know, well into the money. You never know. You know, if Zeke... Oh, yeah, you never know. You're right. I mean, you're right. If Zeke's the highest scoring running back on the slate, which mm-hmm. he very well can be every time very he steps onto the yep. field, and Julio Jones is the highest scoring wide receiver on the slate, which he has a chance yep. to do every time he gets on the field. Ertz same has... Ertz, a, same thing with Ertz. Patriots at defense. Yep. I mean, and, we, we uh, could have four of the top positions. You're absolutely right. It's going to come down to Josh Jacobs. E- even if he gives us... 12 to 15 points, that's still not bad for his price. He's priced really, really right. down. Uh, if Josh yeah, shakes his... 20, 25 points from Jacobs in this lineup could push this thing way up. That could be great. And we need, we need Carson to go bananas at home, coming off a big mm-hmm. win in Lambeau. I think he's got a high floor, and he could put up a 30-burger in this one. So I'm feeling good about this one. I'm definitely going to have a, a lineup like this entered... Uh, and kind of, kind of build around that for my others. Uh, but this is the official balls deep lineup of the week. So, uh, any closing thoughts here, Dave? Before we sign off. Yeah. So, um, I do have one. Um, if you had to take a guess, which of the fifty states do you think I hate the most? Ohio. 
Ohio. I, I hate everything about Ohio. <laughs> and it absolutely kills me that I'm going to own so many shares of Bengals. So I'm going to just warn you right now, if Dalton and Tate and Eifert don't make me some money, it's probably about a three and a half hour drive, maybe not even, maybe about a two hour drive to um, the Ohio border. And I will, I will go across the Ohio border and I will take a huge dump in Ohio and come right back home. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to hold you to that there. Okay, um, I'm just telling you right now. I also I just want to give a shout out to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the Pro Football Hall of Fame. <laughs> I had a, a pleasant experience at both on my cross country drive to New York. So uh, let's hope that you don't go take a crap in Ohio. I got my fingers. You know, I'd hate to be like I don't want to be in Ohio at all. I'd really hate to be in jail in Ohio. Yes, that would uh, that would not work. Well, if you're going through with the border there, you just gotta hop over it right over real quick there. Maybe you yeah. can get your your feet in uh, Michigan and y- your ass <laughs> over Ohio. over the border. Yeah. I think I think yeah. that can work logistically. So. Thank you, everyone, for, for listening. We appreciate you. We're going to try and keep this coming. Uh, this was not a 15-minute podcast, which was good. We really got to dive no, deep here. We had to here. make up for last week. We yeah. had to make up for last week. Uh, Dave, it's a, it was a pleasure as always, and signing off.